Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Vasek and I am um, very near London, in one of the parks near London. And I thought that it would be a great place to share with you some of my favorite books of the past month. The atmosphere of those books uh, very closely matches the atmosphere of this small kind of uh, forest that is near, near my house. And uh, I thought it would be a great place to share with you some of those great reads. Actually, they approach they approach the same subject of how we can get grip of our life, how we can get more stillness and peace in our life through four very different angles. The first book that I would like to tell you about is called 4,000 Weeks, Time and How to Manage It. It was written by British-American journalist Oliver Berkman. The second book that I would like to tell you about was written by the Italian physicist Carlo Rovelli. Uh, it's called There Are Places in the World Where Rules Are Less Important Than Kindness. It is his collection of brilliant essays on Newton, Einstein, Nabokov and many other people. The third book on this list was written by Karl Ov Knosgaard. I hope I'm pronouncing his name correctly. It's called So Much Longing, So Little Space. It is kind of a biography and memoir of Edward Munch. Helicopters over the forest. And the final book, and one of my favorites of this month, is called Hiking with Nietzsche, written by Professor John Quagg. As you can guess from this list, these books already convey kind of the atmosphere of this, of this forest. The title of the first book, 4,000 Weeks by Oliver Berkman, refers to our average lifespan. 4,000 weeks is the amount of time that we have if we live at to the age of 80, which is right now the average lifespan in the Western world. So like I'm currently 30 years old, that means that I'm roughly on my 1,800th or so week. While I was reading Oliver Berkman's book, I was constantly thinking about what the Roman philosopher Senate said, who said that it's not that our life is short, but that we waste a lot of it. Oliver Berkman's book expands on this Seneca idea of what it means to waste life, actually. Many productivity YouTubers and writers say that in order not to waste life, we have to squeeze as much as possible into our calendars, into our to-do lists. And what Oliver Berkman mentions in his book is that the desire to squeeze as much possible into your diary comes from the refusal to acknowledge that your time is limited into this world. The solution is not about squeezing as much as possible into our schedules and to-do lists, but instead focusing on what is truly meaningful to us. Since this is a book channel, one of the great examples of this would be me trying to read the entire collection of books that is kept in the British Library or Library of Congress. I won't be able to read 0.01% of all the millions of books that the those libraries keep, but instead I can focus on books that I find meaningful and useful to my life. But the last idea that I would like to mention from this book comes from the example that Oliver Berkman gives of an American who traveled to a Buddhist monastery. And one of the things that monks at this monastery advised him is that he has to pour a bucket of freezing water over his head every morning. So this American who tries to understand the key ideas of uh, Buddhism uh, was pouring the, a bucket of freezing water over his head almost every day. And for the first month, he was trying to ignore the pain of the freezing water pouring over his head and over his body. He thought that if he blocks out the pain that comes from the freezing water, it will be less painful. But the idea that he discovered not long after was that it wasn't about about ignoring the pain but about embracing it, about fully feeling the cold water and getting used to it. Um, I thought it was a brilliant example, especially in our day when one of the ways that we avoid the pain is by distracting ourselves either by social media or, or productivity itself. And I think this is what makes Oliver Berkman's book really brilliant. 
And the second book that I would like to share with you, it was written by the Italian physicist Carlo Rovelli, and it's called There are places in the world where rules are less important than kindness. It is his collection of different articles that he wrote for various uh, Italian newspapers. They weren't available in English and were translated just recently. It, I believe that this book was published sometime either July or August of this year. First of all, it's a wonderful hardback. It has a wonderful paper, wonderful font that was used in this book. They say don't judge the book by its cover, but I cannot pause and appreciate the quality of this publication by Alan Lane. And it has this bookmark, do you know this? I don't know if this type of bookmarks has a different name in English, but the overall experience of reading this book is so brilliant. I really loved it. And this is a brilliant collection of 30 or so essays. And what makes all of them unique is that they unite science and art together. And there is a beautiful quote that I would like to read it out to you. I've put it on the front page of my diary. Rovelli says, the culture of today that keeps science and poetry so far apart is essentially foolish to my way of thinking because it makes us less able to see the complexity and the beauty of the world as revealed by both. I think it will be a very strange to compare Oliver Berkman's book with Rovelli's essays because they technically address different things but both of them teach us how to lead a meaningful life. If Oliver Berkman was trying to teach us how we perceive time and how we can be more present, I think the essays of Rovelli teach us how we can look at the world through scientific and artistic lens at the same time. I personally noticed a lot from the science writers, from art critics, that they try to stay apart from each other. But I always say that artists such as Leonardo or Albrecht Dürer, what they did essentially was they converted science into art. They were a unique unity of those two things together. I've made a separate video on this book as well and I'll link it up some, somewhere uh, here but you will definitely be able to find it in the description below. I've tried to write the script for this book so many times, but I failed to do it because this book refuses classification or categorization. It is Karl Ove Knosgaard's book called So Much Longing in So Little Space. We know Karl Ove from his series called My Struggle, Min Kampf, if I'm not mistaken. But in this book, um, Karl Ove looks at the art of Edward Monk. This is not a biography of Edward Monk. This is more Karl Ove's relationship with the art in general. I think one Russian film historian said once that every filmmaker and every writer have their own personal painter. For example, famous Andrei Tarkovsky, his artist was Andrei Rublev or Albrecht Dürer. And it seems that Karl Ove Knosgaard's artist is Edward Monk. I think the very best way I can describe this book is by reading out to you the first sentences of this book. Karl Ove starts his book by saying, Sometimes it is impossible to say why and how a work of art achieves its effect. I can stand in front of a painting and become filled with emotions and thoughts, evident, evidently transmitted by the painting, and yet it is impossible to trace those emotions and thoughts back to it and say, for example, that the sorrow came from the colors, or that the longing came from the brush strokes, or that the sudden insight that life will end lay in the motif. After finishing this book, I tried to make a separate uh, video on this to review this book, but this book refuses to be reviewed because it is so complex. It is Karlova's relationship with Edward Munch's art, how it influenced his books, himself, his overview and philosophy of life. Of course, it also touches upon Edward Munch's life, but I cannot say that it is a memoir. I cannot say it is a biography of Edward Munch. I cannot say that it is art criticism or anything. It is more a person's very deep relationship with an artist that had a profound influence on his life.
And the last and final book, and perhaps the book which inspired me to come and record this video in this forest. It is Hiking with Nietzsche by Professor John Gag. I'm one of those weird people who can read Nietzsche during his lunch breaks, and I was often asked by colleagues whether it is hard to read Nietzsche. And the second question was always, where is it best to start reading Nietzsche in general? And I often struggled with answering that question because Nietzsche is so diverse. Someone who studies this philosophy of aesthetics will suggest you to read his Birth of Tragedy. Someone who loves poetry would tell you to go and read Thus Spoke Zarathustra. And for quite a long time I couldn't find the right answer to that question until I suddenly found this book by Professor John Carg called Hiking with Nietzsche. I always said that a really good book that would introduce someone who is new to the philosophy of Nietzsche would have to have three kind of qualities. The first of all, it has to explore the life of Nietzsche and his biography. The second element would be to give an overview of his key works. And the third feature that I believe is one of the most important features is that a great book on Nietzsche needs to show how his ideas can be applicable to our daily life. And this is what Karg does. He tells you about Nietzsche, what kind of struggles he went through, how he wrote his key works and what they are about. Uh, and then he tells about his struggles with depression and how he overcame them. And this is a brilliant book for people who like writings of Thomas Mann, Hermann Hesse, who like historians like Jakob Burkhardt. I believe that everyone who will read this book will have such a change of mindset. And yeah, these were all books that I've read over the past month. I really enjoyed all of them. I hope you will enjoy reading them. You will find all the links down below in the description of this video. As I said, I have a separate video on each of those books, except of the Karlova Knozgaard's one, because it is a book that is hard to review and it is better to just read it. I also have introduced a separate section on my website where you can find all my notes taken from those books with all my favorite quotes, references to other great books, some key ideas, and I also send all of my videos podcasts and book notes uh, once a month straight to the inbox of my subscribers and so if you would like to join my newsletter and receive all of these straight to your inbox just once a month no more you can find a sign up link to that below i would like to thank you for watching this video it would really help me if you'll subscribe to my channel because this channel is brand new and it motivates a lot when i find people um, being interested enough to hit the subscribe button. Once again, thanks a lot and I'll see you in the next one.